Hello. So in today's lecture, uh, we will be continuing our discussion of interfaces, surface tension and weighting. In the previous lecture or in the previous uh, discussion on the same topic, we focused on what interface is, what is the surface tension. And in this lecture, uh, and in the previous lecture, we briefly described about the wetting or the contact angle and contact line. In this lecture, we will focus more about the wetting, the contact line between the three phases and the related phenomena. So, to review, we will look back at the Young's law. So, Young's law is that when we have a solid surface and there is a three-phase contact on the surface. So, if we have a liquid droplet and this outside environment is gas, then uh, the three different surface tension we have here is sigma g l which is also called uh, simply sigma this is sigma solid liquid and this is sigma solid gas so by using a force balance uh, we can simply write that sigma sg is equal to if this angle is theta where theta is called static contact angle in this case the solid surface is assumed to be homogeneous Uh, let us say chemically homogeneous surface this surface is also smooth so theta is the contact angle by having the force balance we have sigma sg is equal to sigma sl plus sigma gl cos theta or we can simply write that sigma cos theta we can just get rid of the subscript gl uh, that is equal to sigma sg minus sigma sl so that is Young's law that we have already seen and it combines or it uh, gives the contact angle in terms of the uh, surface tensions for the three phases. Now uh, next we will look at the concept of work of adhesion. So as you will know that the adhesive force or the adhesion refers to the attraction between two different phases or two different set of molecules or two, two, two different materials. So here what we are looking at that uh, work of adhesion is the work required to separate two phases of two different phases. These two different phases might be two different liquids or it may be a liquid and a solid phase and then uh, we have to separate them or the work required to separate them from one another is what is called work of adhesion. So this is the energy that is released during the process of wetting. So when you have a uh, solid surface and when this solid surface is being wetted by a liquid film, the energy 
of the system changes so the energy that is released during the process is work of addition and you can also think the, uh, it as the work that is required to separate two bodies so you might have seen uh, say for example in our uh, bathrooms we generally have a, a soap sometimes we keep it on a smooth surface and the uh, the soap when it is wet it gets stuck to the solid surface and if the soap is wet there is a small liquid film that forms between the two solid surfaces and then it requires significant amount of force to separate the soap from the solid surface so that is a simple example or a, uh, an example from our day to day life for this adhesive phenomena another example is if you have two uh, glass slides and uh, a small amount of liquid is trapped between them then we generally need to do a lot of work to separate these two slides from each other and that is because of capillarity so consider that two bodies that are in contact uh, with each other so let us say this is body 1 and the other one is body 2 and the area that they are in contact is A as we have seen here so the surface energy of the contact area after the contact uh, the, the surface energy for the contact area is sigma 1 2 into A that is the energy when two bodies are in contact before contact or after this contact has been removed when the bodies are separate the energy will be E1 plus E2 so that is sigma 1 plus sigma 2 into A so sigma 1 and sigma 2 are the surface tensions of uh, body 1 and body 2 and sigma 1 2 is the surface tension between body 1 or the fluid 1 and fluid 2 or the solid 1 and fluid 2 as the case may be so the work of adhesion is the difference between two the delta e so that means it, it will be equal to delta e is equal to the energy when bodies are separated which is e1 plus e2 minus the energy when the bodies are in contact so this is the energy released when bodies are in contact and the body may be a solid surface and droplet or two droplets so this is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 into A which is where A is the contact area minus sigma 1 to A remember that the energy for the other surface is going to be same so uh, when we get this energy per unit area or work of addition per unit area what we get is sigma 1 plus sigma 2 minus 
sigma 1 2 so that is what we have as work of addition now uh, specifically for uh, the contact between solid and liquid young dupre he gave an equation so if we apply the same analysis considering that this is valid for a or uh, considering the case of a solid wall and a liquid then we can write that uh, this is work of addition for this case is equal to uh, sigma 1 plus sigma 2 so we have sigma 1 plus sigma 2 minus sigma 1 2 where let us see this one refers to liquid phase and 2 refers to gas phase so sigma 1 is the surface tension with the gas of liquid phase and sigma 2 is surface tension of solid with the gas phase so we have sigma 1 plus sigma 2 minus sigma 1 2 so now we have solid and liquid phases in contact so minus sigma l now uh, from the young's law we have just seen that sigma liquid gas cos theta is equal to sigma sg minus sl so we can substitute this uh, to sigma sg minus sl from here and we get work of addition is sigma lg or sigma liquid gas plus sigma liquid gas cos theta so that is simply sigma 1 plus cos theta where we have a sigma is denoted for sigma liquid gas if we remove the or if we drop the subscripts then work of addition is uh, the surface tension into 1 plus cos theta where let us remind ourselves that theta is the contact angle between the two phases uh, so for a super hydrophobic surface for a super hydrophobic surface the contact angle will be theta is equal to pi or 180 degree for a super hydrophobic surface so that means cos theta is equal to minus 1 so the work of addition for a super hydrophobic surface is 0 as you can see from here so that means that no work is required for a drop of water uh, to move it over a hydrophobic surface so a drop of water rolls freely over a super hydrophobic surface okay uh, now work of cohesion so as we discussed earlier that the adhesion refers to the attractive forces between two uh, heterogeneous or two different materials now if we are talking about the the say breakup of a liquid volume into droplets then the work that will be relevant here will be what we will call the work of cohesion so uh, in that case what we will have that sigma 1 and sigma 2 will be equal and sigma 1 2 so if you look at from the work of addition the work of addition that we have is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 2 minus sigma 1 2 if 1 and 2 are same then what we have is uh, this becomes work of cohesion and in this case because 1 and 2 are same so we can say that sigma 1 equal to sigma 2 that is sigma 
minus sigma 1 2 so there is no surface tension in the same phase so that is 0 so that becomes 2 sigma so that is why we have work of cohesion is 2 sigma and uh, that uh, then example for this will be say when we want to produce uh, uh, droplets from a volume of liquid during the spraying process and uh, number of other examples okay so that is work of cohesion now uh, we will look at some of the examples of uh, capillary forces especially which are relevant for uh, microfluidic applications so uh, first example in this case is the capillary forces between two parallel plates so as, as we just described that the capillary forces between two parallel plates and uh, there are a number of uh, real life examples so uh, if we draw a picture of this let us say you have two solid plates which are separated by a distance and the distance between the plates is h because of capillarity you might have noticed uh, sometimes that the shape of this is uh, curved so if you look at this uh, the the liquid between the two phases you will have a interface something like this and you have solid this edge in contact with the solid wall and same is this so we can say that the radius of this uh, is r and the contact angle here is theta it is just the distance between two as we have already said that is h so what we need to know is the force required to separate the two phases. Now this is the force will be there will be a pressure difference and the, the to overcome that pressure difference the phrase the force that is required is to overcome the Laplace pressure. So this F is equal to delta P into the area so uh, our task is now to find out what is delta P and delta P is sigma kappa where kappa is curvature we can further write this as sigma 1 over r1 plus r2 which is as curvature is uh, 1 over radius of curvature and the radius of curvature of a surface is uh, the sum of the two principal curvatures. So for this surface the two principal curvatures one principal curvature is uh, this one and the other one is this. So uh, the one radius is about r so we will take this as r now r1 is equal to r what remains to be known is what is r2 so now r2 if we want to find r2 is this radius 
the distance bit from this point to the center of which uh, this uh, uh, curve is a part. So we know that this is h and this is h by 2 when this angle is theta then uh, this angle is 90 degree and this is pi by 2 minus theta so uh, this angle will also be pi by 2 minus theta so we can write uh, sin pi by 2 minus theta is equal to h by 2 divided by r2 or cos theta is equal to h by 2 r2 or r2 is equal to h over 2 cos theta so we have the curvature as h over 2 cos theta so uh, we have delta p is equal to sigma kappa 1 over r minus 1 over h over 2 cos theta so you might be wondering why we have this as minus this is minus because the interface is uh, the is concave in shape so to take into account uh, that into account this is minus so we have sigma 1 over r minus 2 cos theta over h and h h is very very small compared to r so 1 over r can be neglected so we have delta p is equal to minus 2 sigma cos theta over h okay and when we multiply this uh, by the cross sectional area then we get the force required to separate the plates so let us just uh, uh, to have a feel of the numbers that what is the force that will be required to separate the plates uh, we can calculate f is equal to say for uh, water and air water the surface tension is 0 0.072 or we can write 7.2 into 10 to the power minus 2 in SI units cos theta let us say take cos theta an average value of about half so half and h consider a plate distance of about 10 microns so 10 into 10 to the power minus 6 meters into 3.14 into 10 to the power 10 raised to the power minus 4 so what we have is f is about 10 to the power minus 6 this all cancel out what we have is 2 and 2 also cancelling out and uh, so the force in this case is about the meniscus radius is pi r squared that is fine and plate distance of 10 microns so we have this value coming about 7.2 into 3.14 so let us say this 7 into 3 about uh, so 2.1 and 25 and so let us say this will be about 2.5 newton quite a big force to separate the um, quite a large force to separate the two plates 
so uh, this is just uh, to get a feeling of the order of magnitude of the forces that is required to separate the plates we can see that if the distance between the plates is more than this force will be so if it is 100 micron then uh, for 100 micron the force will be 0.25 newton so this is a force that is important or that becomes dominant only when the distance between the plates is small okay another uh, very popular uh, and uh, a very common example of capillary is the capillary rise in a tube. So uh, when we have this capillary rise in a tube, uh, some common examples we always see that the, the wick of a candle we see uh, we burn the candle and the liquid wax rises in the candle by this capillarity phenomena and then the flame is maintained at the top. Similarly, one of a uh, very complex uh, uh, phenomena that happens is when you lighten a Deepak uh, which is or lighten a earthen lamp which uh, in, in India, uh, in uh, different languages we call it Diya or Deepak, it has uh, ghee in it and that ghee is in the winter, let us say it is very chilly winter and then it is in the solid state. Then the flame can only be maintained when the heat provided by the uh, by the flame by radiation or convection and convection combined is sufficient to melt this ghee so that it rises in the uh, by the capillarity phenomena so uh, these uh, the the burning of a lamp or burning of a candle or burning of a deepak they are a very classical example of where the capillary rise uh, is a common phenomenon. So incidentally this capillary rise is the first phenomena or uh, first well known phenomena of capillarity and uh, it was first observed by Leonardo da Vinci in uh, 14th or 15th century. Now he hypothesized that the, the fountains that come out from the mountains they are also he attributed that this happens because of the uh, uh, capillary rise phenomena but of course uh, as we know now that this is not true so after that several uh, scientists have looked at the phenomena have had tried have tried to understood it uh, Francis Hawksby was the first one who uh, studied this phenomena in a systemic manner and he concluded the following that the rise of liquid occurs in air as well as vacuum. So this might look like a trivial, trivial result. But before him, uh, one of the scientists gave a notion that the rise of liquid or the is because in the capillary, the air cannot flow easily. So there is uh, a, a small vacuum to fill that vacuum, the liquid rises. So, he showed from the experiments that the liquid uh, rise occurs in air as well as in vacuum. He also showed that this typical phenomena, because uh, this phenomena is easily observed in glass capillaries, one because glass is transparent, another is 
glass capillaries are very common in our day to day lives or in laboratories. So uh, he showed that this phenomena is not only limited to glass capillaries or not only limited to cylindrical capillaries, it can also be observed, it is also observed the, the liquid rises when we have two plates in parallel or two parallel plates or two plates in between plates also the liquid rise. He also showed that the height of the liquid rise it does not depend on the thickness of the channel. So if your thickness of the tube is 1 mm or if the thickness of the tube is 10 mm it does not depend on it. So these are some of the observations that he made in uh, 18th century. Now uh, the, the law that determines the height of capillarity rise was given by a physiologist, an English physiologist whose name was James Jurin in uh, 1718 and he found that height that is reached by the liquid, so the height of the liquid in a capillary If you have a uh, vessel or a tube filled with liquid and then the capillary capped in that, so the height of the liquid that rises is proportional to the one over r or inversely proportional to the radius of the channel. So that is the first probably the first observation of capillarity and then uh, about a century later Laplace uh, gained the complete understanding of the phenomena and capillarity surface tension and so on. So, okay. so uh, we will look at the rise of capillarity from different angles and uh, try to find the relationship. Uh, so the capillary rise in a liquid if we consider the capillary and consider a point B here and consider point just below it as point A and the contact angle is theta. So the pressure at point A is atmospheric pressure minus 2 sigma over radius of curvature of this interface. So it is a cylindrical tube and this interface it has uh, a spherical shape and it will be a uh, part of a sphere. So if we look at this uh, the, the radius of curvature then uh, we can basically find the radius of curvature from here. So if this angle between this uh, tube and tangent to it is theta then the angle between the two normals the normal to the tube and the normal to the interface will also be theta. So we will have this drawn here as this angle is theta. This is tube radius r. This is uh, radius of curvature. So we have uh, cos theta is equal to r over 
are curvature so we can substitute here pa is equal to p atmosphere minus 2 sigma cos theta over r now the pressure at the level of the liquid in the uh, this vessel or in this tub is uh, equal to the atmospheric pressure so the difference between the two is hydrostatic pressure so we can say that pb minus pa is equal to rho gh so if we substitute that here then we have rho gh is equal to pb is atmospheric pressure minus p atmospheric plus 2 sigma cos theta over r so these two cancel out and we have h is equal to 2 sigma cos theta over rho g r so this derivation or this expression we have obtained based on the uh, arguments for pressure now uh, the same expression can be obtained by assuming the or by considering the force balance so if now we look at the capillary the force acting on this will be in this direction on the contact line so there are two forces acting on it the balance between Uh, capillary force and weight of liquid column so if the height of this liquid column is uh, h we have exaggerated this here to make things clearer it might not be uh, that concave so if this height of the liquid column is h then we have weight pi r square h is the volume of this liquid into density so that is mass into g so that is weight of this liquid column now uh, capillary force is equal to sigma into 2 pi r we can treat it as a tension in the line but the direction of this force is uh, not in the vertical direction so uh, force balance in vertical direction let us say this is f capillary So that is equal to F capillary 
this angle is theta so this angle is also theta so f capillary cos theta is equal to column weight pi r square h rho g now please do not confuse that there will be two uh, components of this because the force is acting everywhere on this so that combined is f capillary and the vertical component is f capillary cos theta so if we substitute this f capillary here then we get sigma 2 pi r is equal to pi r square h rho g pi and pi cancel out r cancel out and we have h is equal to uh, this is cos theta we skip the cos theta here so h is equal to 2 sigma 2 sigma cos theta divided by rho g r so we can also obtain the height of the liquid column from the force balance and what we have learned here that the force in this case is uh, when we want to apply the surface tension force sigma into the uh, radius uh, or not on the radius but the circumference of the interface now uh, we can also use the principle of energy minimization to obtain the height of capillary rise so when we have a liquid rising in a tube then there are two changes in the energy the system gains some potential energy which is equal to uh, half pi r square h square rho g and the system loses capillary energy which is equal to sigma s g so to remember this when we had uh, there was when there is no liquid then this is surface and gas or solid and gas and when it changes then we have a liquid here so the energy changes from solid gas to solid liquid in this case so sigma s l sigma s g minus sigma s l so oh, the change in the energy will be originally the energy was sigma s g the surface energy sigma s g into area of the cross section and then it has reduced to sigma s l so the change in the energy is sigma s g minus sigma s l and this multiplied by 2 pi r h which is the surface area of the wall so the total change in the system energy E is equal to half or pi by 2 r square h square rho g now you might remember that sigma g minus sigma s l from the Young's law sigma s g is equal to sigma 
cos theta plus sigma s l so sigma s g minus sigma s l is cos theta so this is equal to sigma cos theta so this is the gain in the energy and this is the uh, sigma cos theta into 2 pi r h so this is minus sigma cos theta 2 pi r h capital here on the radius of the channel so 2 pi r h now for minimum energy we have de by dh is equal to 0 that means pi by 2 r squared 2h rho g minus sigma cos theta 2 pi r is equal to 0 so we will have 2 2 will cancel out and we can divide through all by r so we will have h is equal to 2 sigma cos theta divided by rho g r okay so uh, that is the expression of uh, capillary rise in a tube uh, using the energy minimization now uh, let us just uh, put the numbers here to have an idea about the capillary rise so a typical uh, let us say uh, we take a capillary of 10 micron diameter so the radius is 50 micron or sorry uh, or 50 micron or 15 to 10 to minus 6 meters so h is equal to for water 2 into we again take cos theta is equal to half 2 into 7.2 into 10 to the power minus 2 is uh, value of surface tension for air water cos theta we have taken to be half and rho for air is about 10 to the power 3 let us take g approximately 10 in meter per second square and cos theta and r is 50 into 10 to the power minus 6 so this 2 and 2 will cancel out and what we will end up with 10 to the power minus 6 this becomes minus 2 so this all cancel out and we have this about 7.2 divided by 50 meters or 720 divided by 50 uh, centimeter so that is about uh, 14 centimeter so that is uh, considering the length of the capillary or considering the size of the capillary that is quite a large height if r is equal to say 1 mm then this number will reduce h is about uh, one tenth of it because this is a thousand microns so h is 1.4 centimeter okay so uh, that is to give you an idea about the numbers if this height is let us say if radius is about 1 micron then h for 1 micron capillary is 
100 times of this so 14 meter uh, the rise of sap in the trees or the rise of liquid water in the trees is uh, determined by the capillarity phenomena and so depending on the size of the capillaries that are there in the plants that determine the maximum height that a tree can achieve okay okay so we have looked at two examples of capillarities one is uh, the the force that is required to separate the two plates and the other is the capillarity rise now we will look at uh, some effect of surface in homogeneity so uh, at the start of this lecture when describing the Young's law we said or we assume that the surface is chemically homogeneous that means it has uh, it is made up of only one uh, chemical material or one chemical substance there is no dirt there is no inhomogeneity in on the surface and there is uh, it is smooth so there is no roughness on it ideally no matter what do we do we will always have some amount of roughness and some amount of chemical inhomogeneity or chemical inhomogeneity caused by the dirt on the surface of the solid so uh, we need to take into account on of these and see if the contact angle varies actually it has been seen it has been observed that the contact angle varies on uh, such surfaces so uh, the surface inhomogeneity is both physical surface inhomogeneity in terms of the roughness and the chemical inhomogeneity in terms of the structure of the material or the different chemicals that are there on the surface uh, or the different materials that are there on the surface both affect the contact angle so uh, two different laws describe the two effects for the first for the physical effect or the roughness effect that is given by Wenzel's law we are not going to derive it here uh, so the roughness roughness is uh, given let us say here by R and it is the ratio of actual and the projected surface area so if the material is rough then the actual area will of course be more than uh, the projected surface area so r is always going to be greater than one and Vangel derived a relationship uh, that uh, cos theta star so theta star is the contact angle on a rough surface so he said or uh, he derived that cos theta star is equal to r cos theta now if r is equal to 1 so let us consider the case when material is hydrophilic so theta is less than pi by 2 and that means cos theta star is less than cos theta and as theta increase cos theta will decrease so that means theta star so that uh, what does that mean that cos theta star is greater than cos theta so uh, theta star is less than theta similarly one can show that for hydrophobic material uh, the theta star is greater than theta so for an hydrophobic material uh, 
theta is greater than pi by 2 and cos theta will be uh, negative. So, cos theta star will be negative and if it is multiplied by a value greater than 1 then it will be less than cos theta. So, that means theta will be theta star will be greater than theta. So, this says that if the material is hydrophilic it becomes more, hydropho my, more hydrophilic and if the material is hydrophobic it becomes more hydrophobic. So, that is what we have concluded here that the roughness it amplifies it amplifies or enhances the hydrophilic or hydrophobic, correct, hydrophobic character of the contact. Okay. Now, uh, coming to the chemical inhomogeneities, so the material may be made up of a number of inhomogeneities, but for simplicity, let us consider a wall that is constituted of uh, two different uh, chemicals. Um, So, the fraction of this, the first material is F1 and second material is F2 and of course, if there are only two materials then we have F1 plus F2 is equal to 1. So, it can be shown, Cassie Baxter's law or they have shown from and that cos theta star is equal to F1 cos theta 1 plus F2 cos theta 2. So, that is the apparent contact angle. Uh, when the material is microscopically inhomogeneous. If we have a number of uh, materials then we can write this in general cos theta star is equal to sigma f i cos theta i. Okay. Now, uh, in this uh, case we have a uh, to assume that the roughness or the size of roughness is small. Okay. So, this property of uh, the material that by changing the roughness or changing the material physically or chemically the surface property or the contact angle contact properties of the material can be changed. So, uh, different materials are used in microfluidic applications depending on what applications you are using. So, for example, uh, say plastic, different kind of plastics which are hydrophobic materials and the glass and metals are hydrophilic materials. And now, different techniques uh, with the recent developments in material science and microfluidics, nanofluidics, different novel materials are being made and no, they are used to change the properties of the material. One typical example is Teflon coating on the frying pans that we have in our kitchens. So, uh, that can be done by chemically depositing a coating of a hydrophobic material say if you want to make a hydrophilic surface to be hydro, hydrophilic surface to be hydrophobic then one can deposit a uh, a chemical coating on the surface of the hydrophilic material with the chemical coating which is hydrophobic in nature. Or other way one can have a microstructured patterns or micropillars or groups on the surface. For example, uh, all of us have seen uh, the lotus leaves and seen that the water does not stick to the lotus leaf, it just rolls through over it. So, lotus leaf is almost super hydrophobic surface. So, by inspired by this uh, um, phenomena in nature, people have uh, uh, tried to develop the surfaces which are or which can achieve super hydrophobic nature. So, in such cases, one need to take into account, one, uh, there has been lot of research 
behind uh, that uh, what is the, uh, the wetting and deviating nature on such surfaces. So we are not going to cover this. So one of the questions for example there will be that can we directly use Van Gilles law even when we have micro pillars of uh, say significant size. So uh, I suggest that you can uh, read the book by uh, Degens, Capillarity and Wetting Phenomena where this has been described in detail or Digital Microfluidics and Micro Drops by Berthier. In both the books this has been described in detail. Okay. So the next topic that we come here is uh, contact angle hysteresis. So uh, if you might remember, uh, say probably in, in your high school you might have studied about magnetic hysteresis that the, uh, the phenomena that occurs in one direction does not occur in the same way or it, it is not retained in the same way in the other direction. So that is what hysteresis generally refer to. So contact angle hysteresis, a typical example, think about a droplet being dropped on a solid surface using a pipette and initially what happens as the droplet volume increases, as the volume of this droplet is increasing, the contact angle start increasing and then uh, the, the droplet does not move rather uh, the contact angle start increasing and the volume of the droplet increases as we can see here and then it achieves a constant value which is what we call theta a or theta a is called advancing contact angle. If then this droplet is sucked back by the pipette as you can see from here then first the angle is reduced and this angle is called receding contact angle. So the angle keeps reducing and then it achieves a uh, uh, value, uh, steady value. So uh, and that, that is theta r and this is theta a. So the aesthetic contact angle is between theta a or between theta r and theta a okay and the contact angle hysteresis is theta a minus theta r the difference between the advancing and receding contact angle is called contact angle hysteresis on a good surface which is uh, say uh, typically uh, smooth and not uh, it's quite clean the hysteresis can be very small say about 5 degree but it can exceed up to 50 degree on a rough and dirty surface so uh, the surface properties can change the hysteresis so hysteresis can also explain uh, say for example uh, many times we see that there is a in a capillary there is some amount of liquid that is And that has remained there residually. So if the contact angle at this is theta 1 and the contact angle in the other direction is theta 2 then we can write the balance between the two uh, here and that the height of this height of liquid column 
can be obtained by the force balance so we can write the force or the weight of this is equal to 2 or oh, not 2 it is pi r square h which is volume into rho into g where h is the height of this column rho is the density g is the gravity and r is the radius of the capillary and that will be equal to the force in this direction will be 2 pi r sigma cos theta 1 minus 2 pi r sigma cos theta 2 so we can have h is equal to pi and r are cancelled so we will have h is equal to 2 sigma cos theta 1 minus cos theta 2 divided by rho g r and we can see if theta 1 is equal to theta 2 then h is 0 here the maximum that uh, because uh, theta 1 is limited by theta r the receding contact angle and theta 2 is by theta a advancing contact angle so the h maximum that can be is 2 sigma cos theta r minus cos theta 2 uh, cos theta a over rho g r okay so uh, that is about the contact angle hysteresis now uh, in the contact angle hysteresis we discussed about the uh, that the contact line may move when the droplet is being uh, pushed then the droplet or the liquid has to move now all of us have seen that for example when you are traveling on a train and it is raining outside then uh, the the droplets on the train they move and the uh, moving of the droplet or the size of the droplet will depend on the on the uh, speed of the train and so on and so forth and uh, we would have wondered that what moves these uh, uh, droplets and what controls the the motion of this droplet and this is uh, governed by the wetting dynamics and uh, or the moving contact line so in microfluidics because the size of the channels are small as we have seen the the number of effects when the size becomes small they are proportional to number number of capillarity effects they are proportional to 1 over r and when the size of the channel becomes small these effects become dominant okay uh, so uh, in microfluidics the wetting dynamics of the contact line also becomes important now this is a multi scale problem so it involves a number of scales the largest scale for example if we are talking about a droplet uh, spreading on a surface then the largest scale is say the capillary length scale which is about 1 mm and the minimum scale is the relevant scale for the interface which is the molecular scale so which is of the size of 1 nanometer so we can see that this spread is about uh, 10 decades so in any study it is difficult to resolve uh, both or all, all the length scales it, it is a challenging task now the other problem with the moving contact lines is uh, which is called contact line singularity or contact line paradox that we apply all of us know that the no slip boundary condition has been found to be valid on the on a solid bond so if it is the movement of a solid liquid solid uh, or liquid on a solid or movement of a gas on a solid 
we have tunnel slip boundary condition which generally say that the fluid that is in contact with the wall will have the same velocity as the velocity of wall so effectively there is no relative motion between the wall and the fluid over the wall okay so uh that is fine now if we have a contact line so for example on a solid surface we have a uh, droplet of liquid gas environment and if this droplet is moving in this direction then uh, the contact line moves so that means there is motion in the near the contact line then only this fluid can move so this is what the paradox is that uh, the uh, the no slip boundary condition is not valid or there is a discontinuity here uh, so we need to take this into of course this is uh, uh, coming because uh, the phenomena that happens here is uh, at the molecular level and the no slip conditions what we are we are describing as macroscopic phenomena which is valid in that the continuum scale so there are different models that had been suggested to take into account this uh, contact line singularity okay so we are not going to discuss those things in detail and uh, uh, you are suggested to go through this paper uh, on moving contact lines uh, Uh, in annual review of fluid mechanics to understand more about it we will just summarize some of the things here uh, that when the contact line moves when we have a static contact angle then the system is in equilibrium but when the contact line is moving then of course the system is not in equilibrium anymore and uh, in the static case because there is no velocity so there is no role of viscosity but the viscosity becomes important in these cases and uh, as we move near the contact point the, the viscous forces that is scale as mu u over r and then r if r is the distance between the uh, contact line and the uh, solid surface then as we move towards the contact line this becomes a uh, very dominant force so uh, this phenomena or uh, uh, this uh, was studied by who and scriven by assuming a wedge kind of corner flow so he derived an analytical solution uh, for a planar liquid vapor interface and then he showed that uh, on the free surface there is a viscosity induced pressure on the free surface and this pressure can only be balanced by the capillary pressure and when we have a capillary pressure then we need that the interface is curved if the curvature is zero then uh, the capillary force will be zero so that means that the free surface uh, needs to be strongly curved close to the contact line so uh, his assumption or his analysis uh, was limited only uh, when the planar was the interface was planar but it came out from there that this in solution not full solution because one need to take into account the curvature of the interface near the contact line so uh, one need to take different scales and uh, into account now some of the conclusions from the paper that the motion of contact line can be deduced by the balance between power generated by the capillary forces and the energy dissipation that takes place at different length scales most of the time this dissipation is the viscous dissipation and it is uh, spread over 5 to 6 order of uh, uh, different length scales from molecular or from 1 nanometer to 1 millimeter length scale and uh, the molecular processes they become important only at the cut off to dissipation only at the few nanometer length scale uh, another phenomena that can be important unrelated to this uh, is that when inertia becomes important when the velocity of the contact line is very high then uh, 
then inertial effects become important and they become comparable to it, uh, comparable to the viscous effects okay uh, so in summary in today's lecture what we have studied is uh, uh, different uh, phenomena of contact line uh, so the capillary rise and uh, two plates uh, having a thin film so we looked at the two examples where we applied the principle of capillary force to find the uh, liquid rise effect then we also looked at the vangel and cassie baxter's law for the uh, surface inhomogeneity it may be chemical or physical so the vangel's law takes into account the physical inhomogeneity of the surface and cassie baxter's law takes into account the chemical inhomogeneity of the surface then we also looked at the uh, briefly looked at the contact line uh, when it is moving so we looked at moving contact line uh, and the scales into it thank you